Hi there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris. I'm a self-taught web developer. And today I thought I'd just record a quick video on whether you should pick Free Code Camp if you're starting your journey of learning to code or maybe you're kind of yeah thinking about acquiring some more technical skills in 2024. Um, so actually at the time of recording this, we're 28th of November. Um, 2023, but I thought it'd be a good time to record the videos. We're kind of, you know, this has been Thanksgiving in the US, but in the UK, I've got Christmas coming up and things are starting to wind down a bit um, for the Christmas uh, sort of holidays. Um, and actually, I found that was a great time to get a lot of coding done, certainly when I was learning back in 2020 um, and 2021 before I got my first job. And I started with Free Code Camp. So yeah, certainly I would fully recommend it um, just from, you know, the, the single data point that is myself, but there's hundreds, if not thousands of others that have gone through um, the cur curriculum and the program um, and have picked some different cert certificates. Um, but I'll kind of go through what I went through and what I recommend, but there's certainly a lot on here now. And yeah, you certainly can get a job um, or at least acquire new technical skills. So alongside this with, let's say, some other websites. So I used Codecademy and Scrimba, which if you'd like to kind of hear my thoughts on those, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to record videos on them. But I also used YouTube as well, a lot of tutorials, um, as well as just sort of building my own products and, and websites and that kind of thing before I got hired as a, a full-time front-end, or actually it was a full-stack developer role. Um, so yeah, I feel like I can kind of comment on Free Code Camp quite nicely. Um, I spent spent a lot of time in sort of their IDE here, um, you know, filling out the challenges. And if you might have started, or maybe you've kind of stopped, or you want to pick it up again, um, I definitely recommend over the Christmas period, um, or certainly into twenty twenty four, is signing back into Free Code Camp uh, and giving it a go. And essentially, if you're not aware, it's a, they're a charity. They host a bunch of, as you can see, over 9,000 tutorials. There's a lot of information on the website, freecodecamp.org. Otherwise, there's a big YouTube channel as well. And I think it's got, you know, sort of a low, maybe sort of 5 million um, subscribers, maybe more. They're pumping out videos all the time on different topics, which is a great way to keep on top of sort of different tech and emerging trends as well. Um, but yeah, if we dive into the curriculum, which again, I think I've done a video on this before, but I would say if you're looking at certainly front end and then kind of web development, I would start with responsive web design. That was the first certificate that I did. Um, you kind of learn a little bit about HTML and CSS um, and you won't touch any JavaScript. And yeah, it's relatively easy. They do kind of ease you in um, to that. By the end of it, you'll kind of have a, a base level understanding of HTML and how to structure a page and then also CSS, which is how to style it. Um, so just for an example, if you look at this, this we'll call it kind of the box here that has some text and an icon, that will be all HTML and CSS. Uh, that's powering this in my web browser here, which is Google Chrome. So after that, you would definitely want to continue on and to check out the JavaScript algorithms and data structures. So JavaScript is a sort of programming language, a scripting language, um, but yeah, it's used on the web and they start with a nice basic JavaScript. And you can see there's 113 modules effectively, but you can knock out a couple of these relatively quickly um, and maybe do them in batches of five or 10, for example. And then certainly as you kind of progress on and there'll be some data structures and then um, intermediate algorithm scripting, each of these took a little bit longer. I was maybe doing like one or two a day, um, if that sometimes, uh, whilst I was learning sort of on the side. But as you can see, kind of went through them all. And what's quite nice is that, you know, you can, let's say, skip ahead and, and do another section, but the way they've laid it out is actually really nice. Like you're learning object-oriented programming and then functional programming. And then sort of by that point, you can perhaps complete some intermediate algorithms. Um, using the OOP and functional programming that you've just learned. So that might have been a few days ago, it might have been the same day, um, but because it's a nice linear progression, um, yeah, you, you, you just keep learning basically. And actually the, the layout of the course is really well done and really well structured. So next I did front end development libraries and this, if you don't know, is React um, or sort of the logo for React, which was the front end framework that I actually wanted to learn anyway. Um, so yeah, I started, on this and learned a bit about Bootstrap, um, which is a sort of a front-end framework um, for responsive design. A um, bit of jQuery as well, which whilst perhaps isn't used as much, so you'll mostly be writing 
JavaScript or maybe TypeScript if you're working in the front end. There are still some older applications or um, I certainly know when I was working with this C-sharp.net application, um, there was some jQuery within there. So yeah, it's good to kind of know about it and know some of the more legacy technologies that maybe you won't be writing, but it will help to understand um, and yeah, kind of go through that. SAS as well, which is um, something that I use every day. Uh, it, it's, it's really quite cool. And yeah, it's a little bit kind of like TypeScript is to JavaScript. SAS is that to CSS, which is a, a language extension of it. And it just allows you to do some slightly different things. There's only nine section like courses parts on here. Um, you could probably take a separate course on SAS itself. Um, yeah, it, it's really powerful. Um, and there's probably a lot of stuff that I have forgotten actually within here that I don't do every day. Um, so yeah, interesting um, sort of language. And kind of moving on to React, you'll see there's a good amount of um, sort of React, um, I guess, components here. Uh, not components, that's basically speaking in React, which you'll understand about different React components. Um, but yeah, good amount of um, sort of items on this course. And then also Redux as well, which often goes hand in hand with React whilst it can be separate. Um, and again, that's kind of what I do at the moment, writing React Redux um, together. And you'll see here, it looks like it didn't actually complete these, um, these libraries. And I think if I remember correctly, I didn't even do Redux at the time um, when I got my first job. So yeah, that was actually after that, I was still learning React, which it was a React role, but also some C Sharp. Um, so really I did the first two definitely sort of fully and then had started the front end development libraries. Um, whilst, I, as I said, kind of was doing other courses on the side. And this is all part time over the about a span of about 13 to 14 months or so since I first started with HTML and CSS um, before I got my first developer job. So yeah, you know, that's kind of the time terrains, you know, for example, if I was just doing an hour or two a day, um, I do know some people that I mentor can spend a lot more time on it. If you're, you know, if you're full time studying, learning to code, you could probably knock through these in a couple of weeks, for example, um, and continue on. So in terms of the, the rest of it, there is also backend as well, which is really interesting. And they've got databases. There's the D3 visualization library. Um, quality assurance as well is actually something that I haven't come across um, here, but testing is is really quite um, important. Um, it might be something that I actually look into next as a as a course to do. So kind of add that to my repertoire because um, certainly within my current role, we are expected to do a little bit more of quality assurance um, and just sort of make sure our work is, is sort of ready to um, be pushed to production um, when we're raising sort of the MRs or certainly after code review. Um, so yeah, that might be something that I'll be looking at next. But as I said, if there's any others in here that you might want to um, sort of have a look at, certainly with the Python certificates, um, and there's also machine learning and college algebra with Python, um, you know, that again caters to maybe the other sort of junior developer who might learn Python over JavaScript. Um, certainly it seems those two are sort of the top ones when um, learning. So Python is obviously more for data perhaps and scientific um, kind of applications, but there is, you know, there are Python web frameworks and, and, and that kind of thing as I understand it. But yeah, I would certainly recommend JavaScript if you're looking more at sort of web and mobile applications and then Python for sort of other areas. And the last one that I wanted to to note here is that, yeah, there's a new C-sharp foundational course with Microsoft, which would have been really handy in my first developer job um, when I had to learn C-sharp. Um, and yeah, it's uh, something that I would recommend actually going through because you kind of broaden your horizon of different languages. Um, so you, if you ever kind of go through this or sort of learn C-sharp, you'll kind of understand a little bit more um, about different programming languages and you'll find it's quite similar to TypeScript as well, which isn't on here But uh, yeah, I would like to see that actually from from free code camp is to add a TypeScript course um, So perhaps in their JavaScript algorithms at the end or maybe a separate course altogether um, That would be really cool because certainly that's what a lot of companies are using now um, And yeah, it, it definitely helps to have TypeScript in your kind of on your CV, on your portfolio, a couple of projects with TypeScript, um, you know, and can can answer some basic TypeScript interview questions, which I guess finally leads me on to these here. So coding interview prep and project EULA. 
which if you haven't heard, Project Eula is, I think, a completely separate site, if I click into it. Um, but actually, they've got all of the, the problems on here. You can see I started one. But yeah, as you can see, there's a bunch of problems that you can solve. Um, so many. Um, and yeah, I haven't gone through these. I kind of did different interview prep in the sense that I was just building projects. Um, and actually, when it came to them sort of coding questions, for example, I, I didn't really memorize you know anything. It was just more the knowledge that I had gained uh, that I was able to answer them. Um, but certainly some of these algorithms would be good to go through um, with data structures. And you can see there's you've got take home projects, which is really nice. Um, I'd recommend maybe picking one or two of these and just build it, let's say HTML, CSS and JavaScript when you kind of go through that progress uh, or that part of the, um, the curriculum. And then also React as well, or the sort of front end framework of your choice using, let's say, Bootstrap or SAS um, for styling and, and maybe Redux for state management if you can. That would be really helpful because a lot of take home, or sorry, a lot of job interviews, um, certainly within the tech um, industry for even juniors will require a take home test um, just to kind of, I guess, sort of weed out um, yeah, different developers. And yeah, it seems to be, um, it'd be good to get practice on that before you start applying. So these are actually really cool. Um, and I haven't seen this before. So that again, might be something that I could look into, um, but certainly these algorithms um, and data structures. Um, whilst you might not need them for a junior developer role, it is good to know. Um, and yeah, perhaps I'll, I'll be going through these next. So yeah, that's kind of all, all for me um, on this. As I said, there's a lot of stuff within Free Code Camp, and there's so much that um, I'd like to do as well. It's just finding the time. But if you are learning to code um, sort of over this Christmas or into next year, I um, would highly recommend Free Code Camp. Um, and yeah, as always, um, hopefully that helps. And if you do have any questions, let me know in the comment box below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video on Free Code Camp. Thank you.